Hello, I'm Mr. Craig and I wish to work out the even problems for our single replacement and double replacement reactions. Let's go ahead and get right to it. If you haven't seen the examples and you're not sure how to work this out, I highly recommend that you watch the previous video that actually shows me working out the examples. Because what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to move very, very quickly. I'm going to assume you know how to do this and that we're just going to move fast. So if you haven't watched the video before this, um, please watch the examples because I do go into explicit detail. Let's get right to it. So looking at number two, and I think two and four are single replacement reactions. So we know that they're single replacement reactions, but you also should be able to recognize at this point whether you're looking at a single replacement reaction or a double replacement reaction. How can you do that? Well, here I only have one type of element. Here I have a metal with a non-metal. And again, these single and double replacement reactions are all with ionic compounds. So there are no non-metals with non-metals in any of these. So in this case here, we have to recognize using the correct table that this is our single replacement table where we have the metals listed on this side and we have the non-metals listed on this side, whether or not this is a metal or a non-metal. And hopefully you know that chlorine is a non-metal. So in this case, the non-metal is going to try to replace the other non-metal. It's not going to replace the metal. We're going to have a metal with a non-metal. So in this case here, we're looking to see if we will form, um, if that takes place, we're going to form potassium chloride and the iodine will be kicked out. And since it ends in I and E, we know that it's diatomic. So let's see if this reaction will take place. So the chlorine's all by itself. And again, whichever one's listed higher can replace anybody below it. So the chlorine is by itself, the iodine is within the compound, therefore this reaction will take place. So since the, re since the chlorine is listed higher than the iodine, this reaction will take place. And now that we know that, let's bounce the number of atoms. So we have two iodines here, but we only have one there, so we need two there. So now that gives me two potassium. Now that gives me two potassium. Now I have two chlorines. I have two chlorines, and I'm finished with number two. Let's take a look at number four. Another single replacement reaction. How do you know? Because you have one thing by itself reacting with the compound. Now, it's okay if this compound would have been written like this. This is still the same thing. This can still take place. The thing that's by itself won't always be listed first. Okay, just remember the plus sign means and. So in this case here, we are looking at a non-metal for the bromine and it will replace the other, or attempt to replace the other non-metal in the chlorine. So let's see if, if that does take place, and we'll have calcium with a plus two charge and bromine with a minus one charge, which means we need two of those, which means it'll kick the chlorine out. And since chlorine ends in I and E, it's diatomic. So that's what we'll see if this reaction takes place. So bromine's by itself. So bromine is trying to replace the chlorine. Not gonna happen. This reaction will not take place. That is a no reaction. Again, the reason being is the thing that is listed by itself or the standalone is listed below that which it's trying to replace. Bromine's here, chlorine within the compound. It won't, it won't kick it out. It won't cause it to occur. Okay, looking at number six. Looking at number six, now we recognize that we're looking at a double replacement reaction. How do you know? You have a metal with a non-metal, another metal with a non-metal. And again, what that means is that the metals are gonna switch places. So on the product side, we will have potassium chloride, plus one, minus one. So that one's written well, we like that one. And then we'll have iron. And in this case, the iron has a plus two charge because chlorine's minus one, but there's two of them and there's only one iron. So when we look at this, the iron sulfide looks like that. Okay, before we balance the number of atoms, our charges look good. Let's look and see, will this reaction take place? So go to the correct table. This is our double replacement table. Let's pull it up just a little bit. Okay, so let's see, potassium chloride. So find your chloride, again, right here, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they're all in the same, they all do the same thing. So is potassium listed on the top row? Silver, lead, mercury, copper. No, it is not. 
Is it in the second row? Any other positive ion? Yes, it is. So the potassium chloride is soluble, which again means that it will remain clear when mixed together, so it won't do anything. So the potassium chloride is not going to do anything. Let's check and see if the iron sulfide will do something. So find your sulfur. So sulfide's here. Come across is iron, an alkali ion, or ammonium. In other words, is iron listed in this column, group 1A? It is not. It is over here. It's in the D block for the transition metals. So when we look at uh, iron sulfide, going back to the table, so it's not in row 1. Is iron listed here? Beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, radium. It is not. Is iron listed anywhere else in the third row? Any other positive ion? Yes, it is. Not soluble. Not soluble means that we form a cloudy substance or we form particulates in the solution. If it does take place or we do form a precipitate, we want to circle it and we want to write PPT, which means that we have a precipitate. So now that we know that we have a precipitate, let's balance out the number of atoms. So it looks like we have a two here for the potassium, which now gives us two chlorines. We have two chlorines, one iron, one iron, one sulfur, one sulfur. We're done. Let's look at number eight. Again, the metals will replace each other. And so on this side, we'll have sodium chloride, and again, sodium plus one, chlorine minus one. So that's written as we should see it. And then on the other side, we'll have aluminum and carbonate. Now, aluminum has a plus three charge, carbonate a minus two charge. So we have to balance those charges out. So that means we have three of those and two of those. Okay, so at least the formulas are good. Let's check and see if we have a precipitate. So the sodium chloride, let's just add that real quick. Okay, so chloride is here. Come across, is sodium listed on the top row? Silver, lead, mercury, copper. It is not. Is, is the sodium listed here? Is any other positive ion? Yes. Soluble again means nothing's going to happen. So in that case, the sodium chloride is not doing anything, but let's check and see if the aluminum carbonate is doing anything. So find carbonate. Carbonate's down here with phosphate and sulfide. So again, these three still apply to this information here, whether or not it's on the bottom or not. So carbonate is aluminum and alkali ion. In other words, is aluminum listed here? It is not. It is a group 3A metal. So, whoops, sorry. So now we go from here to the second row. What, is aluminum any other positive ion? Absolutely. And any other positive ion means that we have a reaction or we have a formation of a precipitate. So you circle it up and write PPT. We do have a reaction. Since we do have a reaction, let's balance out the number of atoms on both sides. I like to start ugly early. So here's two aluminum. Let's put a two there. So now that gives me six chlorines, two times three, so let's put a six there. Gives me six sodium, so I need, I already have two there. That gives me six there. Now I have three carbonates, three carbonates balanced. Number 10, this is the last double replacement reaction, and then we start jumbling them up. So we know it's a double replacement because we have two compounds. So on the product side, we're gonna make potassium oxide. And again, potassium is a plus one. Oxygen's a minus two, which means that you need two of those potassiums. And what's the other product? We have iron and phosphate. Let's find out what the charge on the iron is here. Well, iron can either be a two or three charge. So if we have oxygen with the negative two, and we have three of those, and we have two irons, that must mean that iron has a plus three charge. So iron is plus three, phosphate is minus three. That one looks good as written. All right, let's check to see who's dancing over here. So oxygen, whoops, I don't have oxygen on here. That's a bad example. Sorry guys, uh, I'm gonna tell you the rule for oxygen is anything in group 1A is soluble, anything, any other metal with oxygen that is not, is not soluble. So this is soluble, 
and I'll make sure I don't do that to you. I'll make sure that it's actually listed. But let's look at the iron phosphate. That's suspect. So find your phosphate, and we have it listed here. Is iron an alkali ion? In other words, is iron listed in group 1A? Nope, it's right there, it's in the D block. I think that's a little deja vu. So when we look at the phosphate, it is not an alkali ion. It is any other positive ion, which means it is not soluble. So we do have the formation of a precipitate. And so in this case, circle it up and write PPT. So we do have a reaction. Now we need to balance out the number of atoms on both sides. So let's see, let's go ugly early here. So we have two iron, so let's put a two there. Gives me two phosphates, so let's put a two there. So now I have six potassiums. I have two here, let's put a three there. Now it gives me three oxygen, and I'm balanced. Okay, so again, on your solubility rule for oxygen, I'll make sure that you have oxygen, or you won't have oxygen on the test, but in AP, we'll talk about it. All right, flip the page over. Now, we're jumbling them up. And so you have to tell me, are we looking at a single replacement reaction or a double replacement reaction? I actually want you to tell me what kind of reaction we're looking at. So in this case here, I have zinc, one kind of non-metal, or I'm sorry, one kind of metal, reacting with a compound. So whenever you see that scenario, you are looking at a single replacement reaction. So what that means is since zinc is a metal, it's gonna to try to replace the nickel and kick it out. And if it does do that, then we'll have zinc nitrate. And again, zinc has a plus two charge. How do you know that? Well, you look on the periodic table and you say to yourself, zinc only has one oxidation number, which is plus two. So zinc has a plus two charge, nitrate's negative one, that means we need two of those. So we need to put parentheses around that. And let's see, and the nickel's kicked out. So before we go back and balance atoms, I think we're balanced anyway, we look good. Uh, let's see here, will this reaction take place? So go to the correct table, okay? Zinc is trying to replace who again? Nickel. Okay, so zinc is here. And nickel is down here. All right. So yes, this reaction will take place because the zinc is listed higher than the nickel. So that means we do have a reaction. So we need to balance it. And it is balanced. And you don't do anything else. Done. We don't circle anything on here and write PPT because you will see solid nickel being formed here. Okay. All right, looking at number 14, is this a single replacement or a double replacement? You have a metal with a compound. So this is a single replacement reaction as well. So the magnesium, which is a metal, will try to replace the other metal. And in this case, oops, let's back up one. So we will have magnesium with chlorine. And keeping in mind that magnesium has a plus two charge, chlorine is minus one. So that means I need two chlorines. And if this is successful, it will kick the aluminum out, and we'll have aluminum all by itself. Now, before we go and balance the number of atoms on both sides, let's make sure that magnesium can replace aluminum. So magnesium is listed here, and look at that, aluminum is right below it. So since the magnesium is listed above the aluminum, this reaction will take place but we don't have the same number of atoms on both sides. So we have a three here and a two here. So three goes there, two goes there. So our chlorines are balanced. Two aluminums, we have two there. We have three magnesium, we have a three there. And we're done with 14. Let's take a look at 16. Is this a double replacement or a single replacement reaction? Well, you have a metal with a non-metal, another metal with a non-metal. So that means that we do have a double replacement reaction, which means that the metals will switch places and we will form lithium chloride. Again, don't carry the subscripts. It's not Li2Cl2, lithium chloride. And lithium has a plus one charge, according to minus one, so that's perfect as written. And then we have our barium hooking up with the sulfate. All right, so let's take a look at the lithium chloride and let's find the correct table. So that's a single replacement. Here's our double replacement. 
So, what was it again? Lithium chloride? Good, okay. So chloride is here. Is lithium listed on the top row? It is not. Is it any other positive ion? It is. Soluble. So lithium chloride is not forming the precipitate, if we have one. So let's look at the barium sulfate. So here's sulfate. Come across. Do we have calcium, strontium, barium? There it is. So come across. Not soluble. We have ourselves a reaction. So that means that circle it up. Right, PPT. Okay. And then let's balance out the number of atoms. Uh, we have two lithium, two chlorine. Fix that real quick. I'm putting a two there. And you're done with that one. So get number 18. Do we have a double replacement or a single replacement reaction? We have a metal with a or with a compound. So this is a single replacement reaction, which means that the zinc is going to try to kick the copper out. So let's see if that'll happen. Whoops. Now what will form if that does happen? Let's see here. So we'll have zinc that has a plus two charge. We're gonna hook it up with the chlorine. So plus one, I'm sorry, plus two, oops. Plus two, minus one, which means that we would need two chlorines. And if this happens, the copper will look like that. Okay. So let's see here. Go to the correct table. Let's get rid of those. Okay. Okay. What was it again? Zinc chloride. I'm sorry. Zinc and copper. So zinc is listed right here. Copper way down here. So yes, this reaction also will take place. So if we do have a good reaction, let's make sure we have the right number of atoms on both sides. Zinc, zinc, two chlorines, two chlorines, copper, copper. We're good. Last but not least, is this a single replacement or a double replacement? Well, we have one thing reacting with the compound. It's a single replacement, which means that this is going to try to replace that and kick it out. If it does do that, we will have copper and copper can either be a plus one or plus two charge. I'm going to leave it up to you, whichever one's easier for you. There's already two nitrates. So if you want to say that copper has a plus two charge to help yourself in balancing, cool. And then the lead's by itself. Now, that's immaterial if the copper cannot replace the lead. So let's check. So let's see here. So copper is listed here. And the lead is above. Ooh. That is not going to happen. Okay. Hope this video was helpful. And again, the only way you get good at working these types of problems out is by using this, these two tables, which means doing the homework. So when you have an opportunity to use these tables and to do the homework, by all means do it. If you wait until the day of the test to try to figure this table out, you're going to be doomed. Hope this video was helpful.